you tonight, champion. What's going on? You're still home here, back from my practice cave, and welcome to the first video for my Jason Richardson month. In this video, we're going to check out the intro section of the solo for Aviator by Polyphia. The solos by Jason Richardson, of course. This is one of the technical-wise most difficult solos I've ever played, especially the intro. There's some really, really tricky passages in this. And today, I am here to show you how to avoid those tricky passages, what you can practice to get this one up to tempo, and how you can master the intro of Aviator by Bolivia. Solo by Jason Richardson. If you want the free tabs for today's video, then feel free to check out the description box. There's a link where you can download the tab. And if you want the complete tab of the complete solo, I recommend to go to the website, the shop of Jason Richardson to buy it. It only costs around, I don't know, four bucks or something like this and it has some more tabs in this kind of package. It's really awesome, really worth to buy. Check it out and go and support Jason Richardson. Alright, first things first, I'm going to play this section slow and then we're going to dive right into the lesson. Here we go. Cheers. <laughs> So the first two bar are a combination of a pedal tone kind of sequence and a 16 note triplet sequence. And it's slow, it goes like this. Okay, so first let's check out the note that we are playing here and then I give you some tips how we can develop the speed and um, the few kind of tricky passages of this uh, really cool line. So we are in the key of C sharp minor and that's also the note which we are starting with. The C sharp on the B string, 14th fret on the B string. And then we are outlining the C sharp minor chord going always, or the pedal tone is always the fifth of the C sharp, the G sharp on the 16th fret, uh, sorry, the, uh, oh, the 16th fret on the E string. And then we are just moving the scale descending and we're going to the 14th fret of the E string, back to 16, 12, back to 16, 11, back to 14 this time. So we have... And now we have the 16 note triplet passage, which goes like this. And here we are playing what we're starting on the 16th fret with our ring finger on the E string. Playing 16, 17 with the pinky, 16, 14. Playing 17, 16 on the B string with the same fingering. And then we're going the scale ascending. Just starting on the 14th fret of the B string. And playing 14, 16, 17, 14, 16, 17. The next pedal tone sequence goes like this. And the up following 16 note triplet sequence goes like this. So the sequence uh, itself are the same. Uh, we are only changing the notes. We are in fact going in a different key. We are going into C, C sharp harmonic minor. And we are starting on the pedal tone section with the B sharp. It's called B sharp and C sharp harmonic minor. Okay. Um, so we have the B sharp on the 13th fret of the uh, e, uh, B string. Now I know some people will say, man, the 13th fret on the B string? No, that's not a B sharp, that's a C. Well, but in C sharp harmonic minor, in the scale of C sharp harmonic minor, it's called B sharp. Because we have the note, the letter C in C sharp. So we are not allowed to have two letters in the same scale. So we have to take it from the B and it's a B sharp. Okay, um, so we're starting with the B sharp. Going to the diminished fifths of the B sharp, the F sharp. And then we are having the same sequence. 
but this time we are always going back to the F sharp, uh, even after the last note. And before that we are playing the 12th fret, the E, the 11th fret, the D sharp and the 9th fret, the C sharp. And for the 16 note triplet pattern, we are starting on the E, playing E, F sharp, E, uh, D sharp. Going to the B string where we're playing C, B sharp, and uh, G. A, sorry, A, not G. <laughs> and playing the scale again, ascending. All right, now the next tricky part is the jump from the first 16 note triplet pattern to the next pedal tone pattern. because we have to jump from our pinky on the 17th fret to our ring finger on the 13th fret from the B string and this is not that easy. So I highly recommend everybody to practice especially this jump. So you are ready for the next pattern, for the next pedal tone sequence and you train that you can transform from the 16 note treble feeling into the pedal tone sequence back again. And then adding more and more notes from the pedal tone sequence to get more comfortable with this kind of jump and this kind of change of the feeling. And so on. For the right hand we have some few changes for the pick slant. We are starting with an upward pick slanting. When we're going from the B string to the E string. Then we have downward pick slanting. When we want, when we want to go back from the E to the B string. And then when we want to go back from the B to the E string. I recommend upward pick slanting. So we have up. Down, up, down, up, up, down, up. Okay, coming to the next section. The next section starts again with another pedal tone phrase and it goes like this. Again in the C sharp harmonic minor scale and we are starting with the D sharp. Going to the B sharp on the E string this time. So we have the 20th fret on the E string. Playing the A. G sharp. F sharp. And going to the G sharp with our middle finger. Alright. Now comes one of the most annoying sections from this intro and it can slow, it goes like this. We are starting with a really, really weird sweep arpeggio. We are starting on the 20th fret of the E string, pulling to the 14th fret. Going to the 5th and 17th fret on the B string. And the 18th fret on the G string. With our middle and ring finger. Pulling to the 14th fret on the G string. Going to the uh, 16th, uh, 18th fret on the D string with the ring finger again. And going to the 15th fret on the a string. Then we're playing the same shape, ascending. Uh, sorry. With the only difference that we are sliding from the 14th fret on the E string to the 16th fret on the E string. So in total we have. For the right hand we have pick, pull, sweep, pull. Pick, because don't sweep here when we're going from the D string to the A string. Because we don't want that rest stroke on the A string. We want our tip from the pick free so we can start the next phrase with a down sweep. So we can jump here from the D string to the A string. 
And then we can start with the downward sweep. Hammer on, sweep, slide. Okay, now there was one thing in this section which was really hard for me in particular and this was the transition from the pedal tone section and sequence to the sweeper patches sequence. This one here. Because the last note from the pedal tone section is the 16th fret with the index uh, middle finger and the first one from the sweep section is with our pinky in the 20th fret and we should have the index ringer ready for the pull-off. So this movement in particular, going from one note from the 16th fret on the E string to index and pinky on the E string, 14th fret and 20th fret, um, this movement alone was really tricky for me and really unnatural and unusual for me, so I had to practice this movement alone and really focus on this little movement. Um, because this change always hinders me from getting to the right tempo and getting to the right speed with that lick. Um, so if you have any troubles getting from the pedal tone lick to the sweeper patch lick, then try to focus on this movement. I think it's really unusual for guitar players and it was for me really unnatural, so I had to play or I had to practice really this kind of section. Okay, coming to the next passage from this big sweeper patch section, we are starting with the scale phrase, which goes like this. First, we have a little bit of a hammer on a pull off action here, still in the C sharp minor, uh, C sharp harmonic minor scale. We're starting on the 16th fret on the E string, hammering to the 17th fret, to the 20th fret, and then pulling back again, going to the B string, 19th fret, and going back again to the E string, 16th fret. Then we are playing 19, 17, 16 on the B string. After this we are outlining with a little bit of a sweep action the G sharp dominant 7 chord. And here we are starting playing the 3rd from the G sharp dominant 7 chord which is the 17th fret on the G string. Playing the 7th which is on the 16th fret on the D string. Hammering to the 18th fret on the D string, the root, and then we're playing the sweep up again. So we're playing 17 on the G string and 16 on the B on the E string with our row technique. Now I know that Jason Richardson is not the biggest fan of this row technique, but I still recommend people to practice and to train this technique. As the long years that I'm now teaching guitar, I've, the, I've made the experience that for the most hands, the common hands, the roll technique is the better technique than using every finger alone. So try to practice this with this mini little sweep for example. Okay, after this we have another yeah, hammer on. So. Back again to the 17th fret, to the 20th fret. And then we are sliding, uh, sorry, from the 23rd fret to the 24th fret and back again to the 23rd fret. We're doing a little bit of tap slide here. Now, while we're doing the tap slide action here on the 22nd and the 24th fret, sorry, the 23rd and the 24th fret, um, we are changing our left hand from this position here where we have the 16, 17 and 19 in our fingers to this position here because we are pulling back 20, and uh, sorry it's not 19, it's 20 to seven, uh, 16 to 14. Now 14 with our index on the E string. So trying to practice this as well, do something like this. Oh, sorry. So you get this better up to tempo and up to speed. Okay, coming to the next big section which goes like this.
Now here we are first starting with the C sharp minor patio again. But we're adding the minor seven to it, so we have a C sharp minor seven. We are starting on the 16th fret on the E string, playing 12, 14 on the B string, 16 on the G string, and ending on 13 on the G string. And we have for our right hand we have down pick, up sweep, down pick. Okay, we are now adding the 9th to the C minor arpeggio on the 16th fret from the B string with our pinky, playing again the C sharp on the 14th fret, then we are outlining the rest of the C sharp minor arpeggio with the 13th fret on the G string, 14th fret D string, and 16th fret on the A string. So we have... And we're expanding it with a little bit of scale sequence here on the going to the seventh, the fourteenth fret on the A string, and the twelfth fret on the A string. Then we are last playing the sixteenth fret on the E string. For our right hand, we have down pick, then upward sweep to the A string, down pick and then sweeping from the A string to the E string. And together we have... Now the next section... Here we are outlining an F sharp minor arpeggio starting on the 14th fret from the E string, sweeping down to the 12th fret on the A string. Then we are playing the 16th fret on the A string, going from the 13th fret D string, the 6th relative to the F sharp minor, um, to the 14th fret, the 7th from the F sharp, and sliding this with our index finger. Sorry. And then we are playing the octave on the 16th fret from the D string. Then we are playing the 15th fret on the A string, going back to the D string 14th fret and playing the 18th fret on the D string. So together we have... Sorry. So together we have... I did one little mistake while explaining this line a minute ago. We are not playing the 14th fret on the A string when we are doing the descending arpeggio with the 9th and where we're starting on the 9th. We're going straight to the 12th fret on the A string. So in total we have... Now comes a really, really big jump, a leap of faith, as I like to call it, from the our last note, the 18th fret on the D string, to the 19th fret on the B string with our index finger. And this jump is really, really tricky to get in the right tempo from this kind of fingering to this one. Ugh, this is really tricky. So I highly recommend everybody to train this jump, to practice this jump, to get smooth from the one fingering to the next fingering. All right, let's check out the next passage of this section. We are starting on the 19th fret on the B string with our index finger, going to the 21th fret with our ring finger, and playing with the middle finger the 20th, uh, 20th fret on the E string. Now we're going from the 22nd fret to the 23rd fret on the B string, and we're sliding with our ring finger to make a position shift. Then we're playing with our middle finger and our pinky now the 22nd, uh, 21 fret and the 23rd fret. Going with our index finger to the 20th fret. And playing 20, 21, 23rd and resolving into 24th on the high E string with our pinky. 
All right, this section again. And now comes the last section of the intro of Aviator and it goes like this. Okay, here we have a triplet, 16 hour triplet section with a lot of speed picking in it. Really Petrucci-esque and Jason Richardson kind of style. And we're starting with this line. We're knowing this line from the B string of our 16 hour triplet section in the beginning. And we are playing 9, uh, 20, 21, 23rd and back to the 20th fret. And then we're playing 22nd with our pinky, 21 with our ring finger, and 19 with our index on the B string. And this is really typical Ingmi Malmström kind of style. This reminds me a lot of one lick from my top five harmonic minor Ingmi Malmström licks. So it's really typical, but not that easy to play, I have to say. Okay, after that we're moving on and playing with our pinky 21, with our ring finger 20, and with our index finger 18. Then we are playing on the D string 22nd, 19 and 18. Playing this one descending and ascending, and going back to the G string. Going back to the D string, making a shift between the A and the D string from the 21th fret, uh, sorry, the 22nd fret on the A string to the 18th fret on the D string. Playing the same fingering on the D string and the same frets just on the A string. Making another shift to the E string on the 21th fret. Going back to the A string. Sorry. Playing 20 sec uh, 21, 20 with the ring finger, 17 with the index, going back to the 20th fret and then we're playing 16, 20 and going to the next section. <laughs> but let me first repeat this triplet kind of speed picking Petrucci line, okay? Here we go. After we have landed on the, or after we have reached the 16th fret on the E string with our index finger, we are hammering and outlining again the G sharp dominant seven chord. So we are hammering 16 to 20, playing 18 on the A, uh, A string, playing the seventh and the root on the D string. So we have 16 and 18. Again as a hammer on, but from the E string, from the 20th fret on the E string to the 16th fret on the D string, we are sweeping down. Playing the 17th fret on the G string. And then we are not playing the 16th fret on the B and on the E string with our roll technique, we are doing a scale line. Where we are playing on both frets, uh, sorry, on both strings, 16, 17, 18, 16, 17, 18, and bending from the 18th fret on the E string, the B sharp, to the C sharp. So, this was the lesson for the intro of Aviator, the solo by Jason Richardson. I hope you liked this little lesson. I hope you liked this video. If you liked the video, then feel free to subscribe to my channel for more lessons coming every week. If you really liked the video, then hit the like button, comment, uh, feel free to follow me on Facebook and Instagram if you want to see more about my channel and what I'm doing here. And I wish you a really great time with this lesson. I hope I'm going to see you in the next lesson. Cheers and stay progress. Bye.